Hello everyone and welcome back to a top level game of Professional StarCraft 2. What I've got for you today is a Terran versus Terran between the very best Terran in the world and the current number 2. Now apparently our red player here on the map Waterfall has started off this game with a little bit of shenanigans as he goes for a barracks on the other side of the map and... Yeah, there's gonna be a second SCV right behind the first one as well. This is right outside of the main base here of the player in blue. So first off, in the top right hand corner of Waterfall, playing here with the blue SCVs, we have the man who recently overtook Clem for that number two Terran position, and he goes by the name of Byun. His opponent in the opposite corner, he's been dominating the Korean StarCraft 2 scene for the better part of a decade. With the red SCVs, we're looking at Maru's main command center. Now, I'm sure that Maru wins the vast majority of his games within the next three minutes or so. Now, I know that this is a bit of a longer match, so I don't think he's going to be able to obtain the victory here anytime soon. But against weaker players... Eh? Oh, is this SCV going to build it after finishing up the barracks? Okay, against weaker players, I think Maru probably wins Yeah, within the next couple of minutes. But Bjorn... Luckily for him, actually scouts it because Maru is so greedy with that barracks positioning. At this point, Maru does not know that he's been spotted. Are we going to go for a bunker? Anything along those lines? Apparently not. All right. That means that Bion is probably just going to rely on SCVs and eventually a Hellion and all that. But it's going to be a little bit tricky here because, of course, Maru is producing two Reapers at once and... Two, last time I checked, is bigger than one. Anyways, a Reaper goes into the main base. A little bit of shenanigans right from the get-go. Grenades are being thrown left, right, and center. SCV and Red got sniped right away, though. And that does mean that Maru does now lack that high ground vision. Yeah, good start. Very good start right here for Bjorn. Are we going to commit again? Are we going to wait for the third? No, we're going to go right away. Honestly? Okay, well, somehow both of those Reapers managed to stay alive. Other than that bad boy, but honestly, this is a fantastic situation here for Bjorn. Doesn't need a bunker or anything along those lines. He's going to start off with a one base play. As he goes for the starport right now inside of the main base as well. Could go for a command center, but a little bit difficult to decide exactly how much Maru is going to commit. But this early game definitely has not paid off right here for Maru. Maru still has a good amount of units here, so maybe he can use those in just a moment, but... Uh. He wants to settle for the Supply Depot, I guess. <laughs> Little bit of a dance back and forth. Obviously, Reapers heal very quickly out of combat. But I think for now, Bjorn is in a fantastic position. In the meantime, okay, Maru, despite the failure here in the early game, is still the one who goes for a faster command center on the low ground. Maru always... In, he's always got a lot of confidence in his play, right? In my mind, that's a little bit risky, because what if this army just drives towards the other side of the map? I guess in Maru's, uh, in Maru's mind, he would just go for the counterattack at that point instead, and then suddenly there's four Reapers inside of the opponent's main base. But maybe the Marines in a, in a bunker or something would be able to take care of that. Anyhow, hmm? Supply Depot actually running very low. Bjorn has not started up a new Supply Depot just yet. Hello, Bjorn. Bjorn? No, that's too late, dude. Bjorn actually Supply Block now at 39 out of 39. Starts up a new Supply Depot right now, but that's super late. Around the same time as he also goes for a command center on the low ground. So, um, yeah, you definitely want to start up a new supply depot when you're just about to lose your first one. Especially if you're already coming up on a supply block. So maybe this is going to work out right here for Maru in the end after all. Anyhow, um, it's a 1-1-1 right here from Bjorn, who's now got a double tech lap here. This has been spotted, of course, by Maru, who now knows exactly what he's going up against. In the meantime, on the other side of the map... Despite the early game shenanigans here not really working out just yet, Maru is apparently going to double down on it. He's thinking, you know what, I've still got those Reapers. What goes really well with Reapers is indeed Cyclones, especially with their lock-on improvement upgrade. So I guess that is going to be the play. He's also going to bring a Medivac out to play as well in just a moment. All right, now technically speaking, I think Bjorn should be A-OK -okay against that sort of shenanigans. Benshi right now available. He hasn't seen much, so he probably wants to wait until... Okay, well. Ah, he doesn't see. Okay, that's a little bit unfortunate right here for Bjorn. I was gonna say, I think he probably wants to wait for a little bit longer until he knows that there's a whole lot of... A whole lot of nothing on the side of Maru here to defend against that Benchy. He doesn't want to wait for a second one though, because, well, there's a, uh, a Raven coming up here instead. Bjorn now going for a third command center already. Here's that Medivac, a lock-on improvement. The Magfield Accelerator at this point is done, and what you can do, yes! 
is pick up the Cyclone as the lock-on connects. Maru right now going to the high ground, trying to actually cut off those two blue Cyclones from getting back home. And he once again picks it up in time. Is there enough for Beyond to go? Oh, he actually fights. Okay, well, that's it. Excellent pickup control right there by Maru. Not really running into a whole lot of problems, and that does mean he's got now two Cyclones available. In the meantime, though, okay, that's that Benchy. Uh, third Cyclone already out, too, so no cloaking or anything available on this bad boy, so that all gets sniped out of the sky pretty easily. Cyclones are going to continue the harassment for a little while longer. There is a Siege Tank available, however, so yeah, very soon there's going to be a second tank as well. It's going to be difficult for Maru to continue the aggression, but even though the Reapers didn't really do that much, the Cyclones shenanigans here, together with the Medivac, yeah, worked out quite well. Raven here on the left side of the map. Double Viking available. Honestly, Maru is so ridiculously good, man. <laughs> oh, accidentally fired on his own Viking right there for just a second. Yeah, Maru is so ridiculously good at Terran versus Terran. I believe his Terran versus Zerk is a little bit stronger than his Terran versus Terran overall. At least, like, statistically on a legal leg. But I feel like I've barely ever seen him lose any Terran versus Terran. It's honestly insane. Like, I've cast a lot of Beyond's games over the last couple of months, and you've seen the amount of build order variety that Beyond has, and somehow Maru always seems to, yeah, be even, even more comfortable playing these crazy games. Just trying his best to out-micro the opponent. Now we have two, like, you're not gonna push here, right, are you? Uh, he's bringing the Vikings to the front to provide that vision that the siege tanks need to actually shoot at their maximum range. Really not a whole lot you can do over here, but at the very least, he did see the third command center timing. So, in a way, Maru is now delaying his opponent from actually establishing a third base while he's getting his own third command center morphed into an orbital command. Liberator now available. Maru. Alright. So, Maru is playing cheese, macro, and aggression at the same time. Which, in theory, doesn't really work, but somehow he seems to be able to pull it off. Yeah, just micro well, guys. Just don't be bad at the game. Well, this is actually a clever little benchy over here, though. Very unexpected cloaking field. Yeah, not ideal at all. At the same time, there's also a benchy on the other side of the map, killing a ton of SCVs. Looks like Bjorn is going to be able to break out of that contain. But that cloak, I actually also, I did not pick up on. Uh, it's a little bit funky, because he decided to go benchy into Raven into cloak, I guess? Which is not something that I expected, and neither did Maru, and I had full vision right here of the production tab, so... That ended up dealing quite a bit of damage on the other side of the map, while also simultaneously cleaning up that contain, and now Bjorn still is gonna be able to go to the mid-game with an advantage. Alright, alright, alright. I love watching these two uh, face off against one another. I mean, I've casted a lot of, um... I've, I've casted a lot of Bjorn's games, I haven't casted a whole lot of Maru. I've seen some people wondering as to why that is. Don't get me wrong, I would love to. It's just that the top level players... <laughs> okay, he just saved the SCV with the Medivac. Of course he did. Anyways, um, Maru doesn't play in a whole lot of tournaments. Bjorn basically signs up. Like, if you run a $50 cup, there's a chance that Bjorn signs up for it, okay? Bjorn, Bjorn will basically play in anything. Um, at the very least, is what it seems. And he wins a lot of them, too. So it's a couple hundred dollars here and there, right? He wins probably... Eh. Five or so a week, so it, it yeah, it nicely adds up. And obviously, it's good practice as well. I think a lot of players probably do their practice in custom games and in ladder games, but I wouldn't be surprised if Bjorn does like 50% of his practice in tournament games in those smaller online cups. And uh, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely very successful. But Maru takes a bit of a different approach. It seems that if there isn't at least twenty thousand dollars on the line, okay, maybe five thousand dollars on the line, uh, Maru doesn't play. Anyways, yeah, uh, uh, sure, yeah, sure, man, let's go. A Viking flyby. Landed just to pick off a siege tank, and now they're going back home? No, we're not going back home yet. One of them lands on the high ground, the others are on the low ground to go after the SCVs. Vikings deal bonus damage against mechanical, so they actually kill these units quite quickly. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, so you can imagine, right? If these two were to face off against weaker players, this game would be 100% over. And that's really the uh, the tricky part about Terran versus Terran. If you're playing it on the ladder, it's so easy to accidentally miscontrol. 
Like, it's really easy to lose within the first 10 minutes. Like, if you ever watch my live stream and you've seen me play any Terran first Terran, you've probably noticed, man. It's really, it's really easy. I just want to emphasize how easy it is to accidentally lose a bunch of your stuff in the earlier stage of the match. Okay. <laughs> Poor Cyclone. It was ready to go to town again. Anyways. Now it's Bjorn, only aggressive, uh, or only aggressive rather. He's ready to go across the map and get some damage done. Excellent pick up control again by Maru, keeping all of these units alive. Uh, Maru, the Medivac magician, making cyclones, SCVs, marines, siege tanks, all of them disappear. You love to see it. Anyways, fourth command center coming up for both players. When exactly do you go for the fourth command center? Ah, when well you feel like it, right? When you're like, you know what? I think I'm in a good enough spot. This is where a game of StarCraft is super hard, especially a mirror matchups. Cause like, exactly when do you decide? Okay, you know what? I can afford to not spend 400 minerals on units here, and instead go for a command center, and then you know another 150 minerals to morph in an additional orbital commander, for example, planetary fortress. It's yeah, it's tricky. You have to always balance that unit production with the economy production. While Zerks may have a lot of practice playing that game, right? Where you're gonna want to go for the economy first and then usually the army second. Well, it's easier said than done, that's for sure. One thing that Bjorn really has nicely going for him here is that he's actually got the second upgrade in the NG Bay researching. So Maru has got double engineering bay, but he's only researching out of one of them. That's a problem. I guess at this point he's thinking, okay, I'm behind econo or sorry, I'm behind um, with my army, so I don't really have as much stuff. Maybe that's why he's trying to cut a corner over there and he wants to actually spend those resources on units instead. But that does mean that as soon as those upgrades are done, Bjorn is gonna be quite a bit more powerful. Waterfall is a map with pretty good defensive capabilities, so this high ground over here is fantastic. But Bjorn, of course, is never afraid to just send units, yeah, in multiple groups, and, well, he's ever, even gotta go right now after the fourth command center. Decides to go after the siege tank for just a moment, but eventually, that command center also gets picked off. Okay, really? So aggressive. So aggressive, okay. So that's nice. Excellent movement right here by Bjorn. Okay. We're gonna continue the harassment over here as well, sieging up within that siege tank line of fire. An eye for an eye there in the end. <laughs> I love watching high-level TVT. I know a lot of people are not necessarily the biggest fans of the matchup overall, but... It really is a treat to watch these top-level guys. What's scary about Maru too, and then I'll stop fanboying for a little bit, okay? But I would say that Maru is probably the scariest Macro Terran in the world. Like, this guy just will not die. And yet, he's the one oftentimes cheesing. It's kind of like a reverse Showtime, you know what I mean? Like, Showtime is super good when it comes to playing the Macro game. But imagine Showtime starting off every game with cheese. Like, <laughs> okay, maybe not every game, but Maru definitely likes mixing it in. More so than most of the other top-level players. And yeah, that is despite the fact that he's really, really good at playing the long game. Anyways. There's a very uh, tight choke point right here on the river. Apparently the marines, they have their boots on. The siege tanks apparently can just roll through the shallow water, but... It's, uh, it's a dangerous choke point, that's for sure. A lot of splash damage can be done. Okay. Maru's got a new command center, ready to establish the fourth base, but Bjorn has already been mining four expansions for a little while. Or I guess three expansions, four command center in total. We'll probably go for additional CCs here in just a moment. Now it's actually Mr. Um, yeah, I think he actually must have forgotten. I don't think this was a mistake, or maybe it was, I don't know. Anyways, now it's actually Mr. Bjorn who's not researching the plus three, which is kind of funny, so they're taking... Uh, they're taking trades here, which means that in the end, everything will be relatively even. Now, while the early game of Terran vs. Terran is tricky, the mid and late game may actually be even harder. It's so difficult to make these sort of calls. Apparently, Mara looks at it and he's like, yes, stim forward, my lovelies. 
Take your combat drugs, get into the combat, and go after those siege tanks and marines. It's so easy to accidentally mess up, but... Maru manages to break out of that contain of his opponent, and... Well, Bjorn is attempting a flyby on the left side of the map, but that one did get denied. Sensor towers, of course, are super helpful here too, so every time there's something within that circle, Maru is gonna get a little blip on his radar, and the same can be said for Bjorn, of course. He's also now got a couple of sensor towers already set up in really nice positions. Okay. So, 15 minutes into it. It's been an absolute bloodbath. And yet, no one's really at a significant lead. I actually don't like that Bjorn is not gone for the plus 3 armor. Uh, sorry. Yeah, he started up right now, but it's... Yeah, it's not ideal. Anyhow. In the end, I think that both of these players are gonna be able to get through those upgrades anyway, so it doesn't really matter all too much. Bjorn forcing his opponent to siege up right now. Backs off once again. He's going for additional command centers right now. Plus, of course, the fusion core at home. Fusion core, I would love to see it as well for uh, battle cruisers, but pretty much always for the Liberator ranged upgrade. Well, now, every once in a while, right, when the players have money, they will go for... Ooh, actually, big stim over here. They will go for the battle cruiser transition. Apparently, Bjorn thinks about engaging over here, but as soon as all of those things siege up, an absolute bloodbath once again. Whew. Both players end up losing a lot of units, but Bjorn a little bit more than his opponent for sure. Vikings still harassing back and forth. It looks like Maru has got them covered as well. And he's now going for another expansion on the right side of the map. Whereas Bjorn, at the same time, is staking another base on the left. Yeah, they're very in sync, huh? Despite all the aggression and the ridiculous amount of losses on both ends, it is now uh, apparently time to go for an extra base. Widowmine over here, though. Super annoying. Yeah, how exactly are you going to clean that up? Well, going to need a scan over there and a couple units as well to get rid of it. And then eventually that command center can land. Marudel marching through the right side of the map. Sensor tower here is going to give Bjorn the heads up that indeed, yes, this is happening. Is he going to stem up that ramp? Oh my god, he is. There are a couple siege tanks there over in the back as well, plus two more even further back. Then again, though, units have run down that ramp already. Siege tanks are just murdering everyone. But Bjorn apparently feeling comfortable enough to drop a couple more units, land to the Vikings, try and grab a couple of those units on the door retreat. Mara right now with siege tanks right there in the back as well. Landed Vikings get picked up inside of Metavex to keep them alive for a little while longer. There's the Liberator range coming up for Bjorn. Super nice upgrade. Especially when you have that air superiority. I can't get over how even these numbers are. Despite all of this fighting. Or maybe because of all the fighting. I don't know. Maybe it's not the spike. Okay. Whew. Beyond right now trying to create a chokehold on this expansion. Since he does have liberators and his opponent doesn't. Life becomes a little bit easier. For the player in blue. At least temporarily. There's going to be uh, a single Liberator. You know what? I said that Maru didn't have him, but this one Liberator <laughs> in the top left is getting a lot of work done as well. Maybe Maru is taking some losses here. Supply cards, man. Look at this. It's so silly. 18 minutes in. Nearly 19. Yeah. So sick. Okay. We've really come full circle in StarCraft 2, it's fantastic. Like, the mirror matchups used to not be that popular, but they've really gotten so good over the last couple years. Constant engagements, constant fighting. And, well, that's the end of that planetary fortress. Maru had given up on that one a little while ago. That does mean, though, that Bjorn obviously doesn't have all of his units at home. He's gonna need to bring these units home, I believe, because otherwise I don't know if he's gonna have enough to actually hold this big push here from Maru. Vikings here are available for Maru as well to provide himself with some additional vision. Okay. Yeah, he knows that the Liberators are still there. Liberators could probably win that fight. Yeah, yeah. Normally not really used as an anti-air unit, but... When there's uh, not a lot of HP on those Vikings, they actually do pack a punch, especially with some upgrades. Bjorn actually only had the... Oh, actually, he doesn't have any upgrades. These are all for the siege tanks. Anyways, doesn't really matter all too much. But yeah, they can definitely deal damage to clumped up units quite well. Siege tank count now looking pretty healthy here for Maru, having 10 of them in total. 
One way you can get Bjorn off of your back with all of those dropships is by being aggressive all of the time, right? So even though Bjorn would love to send a medevac drop towards, for example, this base right over here, uh, he doesn't really know if he can commit that many units and then simultaneously also defend at home. All right, apparently this is the point where he wants to get aggressive. Maybe a little bit of a far siege up right there on those Liberators. Then again, though, Marines are ready to stem forward. They decide to back off here eventually. Vikings getting rid of all of those Flyer units, but... Yeah, reinforcing Marines are making this relatively okay here for Maru. I think that this little fight here was won by Bjorn. Economically, though, where are we currently at? Let's see. Yeah, so Maru has had that base over there on the left side, right? And I don't think that this is something that Maru actually knows... Or, sorry, that Bjorn actually knows about at this point. He hasn't seen that expo. Finally, Maru is gonna get cleaned up right here on the left side, but that Liberator must have denied mining on this one planetary fortress for, like, three minutes. That's just an APM limitation, right? Even though <laughs> these guys are playing at nine actions a minute, or a second, rather, 450 a minute. Um... Yeah, apparently still not fast enough. Game's hard, man. Game's real hard. Liberators right now, though, being very obnoxious. This is the time where Bjorn decides to commit. There's a lot of tanks available here in red. If he decides to run those marines forward through the choke point over here, I don't think it's going to go particularly well. Okay, Maru pushing. Trying to get his opponent with their backs against the wall. But Bjorn is producing a large army. He still has a good amount of Vikings as well. And that air superiority is going to open up the door for those Liberators to come in. Okay, he does spot the base over here. Still, uh, okay, no, he does actually know about the Orbital Command on the left side of the map too. So that's quite important. As soon as those units are committed to the right side of the map, apparently this is also the moment where Maru decides to stem forward. So even though Command Center here goes down, together with 14 SCVs, a lot of units also found their death over here at Bjorn's newly acquired base. Bjorn now mining though on the left side of the map once again after cleaning up that Liberator, so he should still have a good amount of income. Very ambitious little medevac drop, probably headed towards this base over here, but there's a couple siege tanks here on the high ground that are more... Oh, actually, there's one behind the tree. Okay, I was wondering where that one came from. Okay, anyways, they're gonna be able to get rid of those Marines, and even though the siege tank also goes down, that is Maru cleaning up that fight. Don't go through the center, SCVs. Thought they were going <laughs> like that, towards the left side of the map. Speaking of going to the left side of the map, though, apparently this is where Bjorn's next point of attack is going to be. Maru already sniffing that out as well as he moves his army towards the left side. That means that this expansion here should be relatively mineable, but... Yeah, Bjorn is leaving some units behind for the base defense, whereas the vast majority of Maru's army has been with his, well, actual push. Okay, I don't think Bjorn is really in the best spot here. That's a lot of siege tanks for uh, the red player, and a couple of them are within a range of the planetary fortress over here on the left side of the map too. Planetaries, of course, cannot lift off. Looks like a liberator here was meant for the harassment, but the Vikings managed to take care of that one without a whole lot of problems this time around. But that planetary fortress is super dead. Siege tanks getting a ton of work done. And that is another win right there for Maru. Where are we going now? Maru is just walking beyond around the map, it seems. You got him on a lead. Okay, so that's a, that's a brilliant economical advantage right now, though, for Maru. Yeah. So every minute that goes by right now is getting roughly 1,500 minerals more. That is not something you can feel comfortable uh, with if you're Bjorn here. So Bjorn has got good income over here. But there are two bases mining right now for the player in red. Okay. Bjorn wants to halt this by going for a big engagement here in the center. But again, this choke point also not favorable at all. Air superiority is really nice, though, for Bjorn, but he's not really getting that much value out of it, it seems. That's another orbital command going down for the player in blue, okay? <laughs> okay, he just dropped one, uh, one marine on top of a siege tank, hoping that the other siege tanks would do friendly fire by shooting at that marine, but Maru unsieged it just barely in time, and he actually just took out that marine without really losing anything. Another couple siege tanks going down. I think that Bjorn is crumbling. Bjorn is starting to fall apart here. I was taking a sip of water. Maybe that was not the opportunity for it, man. Uh, I think there's enough for Maru. The siege tank count is just so big. It's just marines and tanks and a couple medevacs. 
So I think what Bjorn really needs to lean on here is that Liberator advantage, right? Since he's got so many Vikings up in the air, the Liberator should provide so much value. But I guess he doesn't have a lot of money anymore. He's gonna go after one of the bases over here, though, and this is nice. Taking care of one of these command centers would be super good. Couple of siege tanks, though, available. Dropped outside of those planes. That means only the Vikings are now left to deal with that, but I think it might still be enough. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so 25 minutes in. Supply dead even. Liberator harassment over here. The bottom right in corner. Also making it difficult for uh, Maru to continue onwards mining. <sighs> well, you know what? I thought Maru was grabbing the lead in this match. And I think he did have it for a moment, but... One group of bases that hasn't been mined yet is the one over here in the center, right? It's got a high yield gas, not very needed for Terran versus Terran, but... Anyways, Maru going for a big push up towards the high ground, realizing that his opponent's defenses are on the left side of the map, so he kills another orbital command. Not bad at all. This opens up the front door towards the main base if you want to, so you could go for a big drop over there. Not really Maru's playstyle, but we've seen him do it, well, every once in a while. This Viking apparently has cleared out the Liberator on the right side of the map, so Maru is going to be able to continue mining in this section. Wouldn't mind seeing Bjorn attempt to take that base right over there as well. What a ridiculous game. Oh my god. I haven't heard anyone talk about this match, but... <laughs> this is so silly. We're nearly half an hour in. No one's really at an advantage yet. Oh no, back off, back off, back off. You only need a couple Liberators, right? Yeah, those Liberators are super nice. Maru contemplating going for the opponent's natural, it seemed, but gonna be pushed back from that position. Liberator goes down. Siege tanks on the high ground, though. Uh, they get spotted as they siege up. <sighs> Maru now going for the grand split, leaving half of his army on the right side of the map, whereas, well, he's ready to attack with the other half. That does mean that his orbital command is in a lot of trouble, but certainly a bit of a gamble. A lot of marines are going to find their death over here, and there's a good chance you're going to get pushed in in this section of the map. Although, Bjorn really does need to go for a push, though. He's brought a lot of siege tanks towards the left side of the map, too, so he probably knows what he's going up against. And I think he's actually got this health. SCVs are going to pull away as well from the mineral line. That siege tank really needs to siege up. SCVs are going to go down, 18 of them, but the base lives. Ah, expensive set of losses, though. Very expensive set of losses, but... Looks like the Liberators and the Planetary and all that, or sorry, the Orbital and all that got picked off as well at the same time. Now Bjorn, okay, he's lost a group of SCVs on the left side of the map, but he's got two command centers on the right side of the map. Now Maru, though, has committed whatever units he's still got left over towards the left side of the map too. He knows that he needs to get more damage done here because just killing the opponent's SCVs is not going to be enough with the amount of mules that he's going to be able to drop out of the high heavens. SCVs, once again, pulled away from the mineral line. Ready to soak up as much damage as possible. Maru sieges up, but at this point there's not enough anti-air to really prevent that orbital command from just simply flying away. <sighs> Both players are essentially broke. The fact though that this base has been mining the entire time is fantastic here for Maru. That's been his lifeline this, this entire, well, late game. A lot of siege tanks ended up going down here. Maru somehow with the supply lead, but I actually think I prefer Bjorn's position here. It's just a siege tank count. Yeah, 10 siege tanks versus 3 is massive. Both players are essentially broke. Maru can produce a lot of marines, but as long as the tanks are in the right place... Okay, this is good, though. As long as the tanks are in the right place, Maru should not be able to get too much work done with those marines. Now, obviously, he's really good at splitting. Bjorn now flying his old main command center on over towards the 3 o'clock position. And now it's Maru's turn to pull the boys. Does Maru have enough to close the distance to those siege tanks? I think he might just have enough to eventually clear all of this up. But is there enough to then also actually push through this? A couple more tanks here in the back closer to the river. They ended up uh, staying alive. That came at the cost of 32 workers. But Maru breaks out of that contain once again. What a game. W what a game. Both players flat broke. 21 versus 18 harvesters. How many orbitals do we have? Only two for Bjorn. Only one right here for Maru. Honestly, Bjorn could go back to Benji's. <laughs> I mean, there's a raven available, I suppose, but... 
That would be one one hell of a transition if he goes back to Benchy play at this point. Anyways, that, there's no way. There's no way, by the way. But anyways, there's a push right here on the right side of the map. Siege tank's not sieged up. Good pickup right there from Maru. Getting on out of there after sniping a couple of those valuable units in blue. <sighs> Can I take a sip of water now? Hmm. Looks like I can. Okay. Is this the final fight? Maru has pulled the boys. The boys have been scouted as well. Is there enough for Maru to push through this? He's thinking that he does have enough SCVs pulled away from the mineral line from Bjorn as well. Even the mules are here to soak up some damage. Auto turrets are coming up and it is indeed Maru who obtains the victory in one of the absolute best games of Terran vs. Terran that I've seen this year. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. It really does help. But for now, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.